Okay, I've updated the diagrams, right? As you can see, we have some deprecated types now. And if we compare with the previous diagram, nothing much changed from the client side. Right. They still point to the deprecated types, but we have options now. We have the new APIs. Exactly. But we are not done yet. As we said before, this result type, they are very specific to quiz games. So what kind of problems would they create? Well, first of all, the result type has the concept of a score. Right. It also stores the answers in a dictionary, which forces the question to be hashable because it's the key. Maybe it's okay because a question should probably be data, but it doesn't make much sense to force these to the client. Right. But what bothers me the most is the score, because as we said, the goal for this series is to show how we can make this more generic, allowing, for example, surveys and questionnaires where there's no concept of scoring. So we basically can't do that right now? Not with those APIs, no. Every game is scored and you make one point per right answer, and that's it. If we look back at the diagram, who creates results at this point is the flow. Yes. So if we look at the flow now, it starts with a scoring function. Mm -hmm. So we can only have scored quizzes because passes. flow creates the result. Right, then passes the result to the client. So it looks like there's a mix of responsibilities here. Right, the creation of the result and the delegation of the result. Right, so that's what we have so far, the two responsibilities it holds right now. It builds the result and then the delegation of the result to the client. Exactly. And those are two responsibilities. Yes. It was okay up to now because it works pretty well for our current clients, but we want to allow different implementations. So we can have more elaborate scoring or we can even not score at all the quiz. Like in the case of a survey. Exactly. If we can separate this, building the result from events, for example, we'll have a concept of building a result mm -hmm. as a separate entity, right? then we could break this responsibility down. Right, that, that sounds good. That sounds great, actually. And then the responsibilities of the flow communicating with the delegate would be just asking for answers to the questions and then giving a result at the end. Right. So we can have a type that conforms to the responsibility of building a result. Right. That could be a scored game. It gets the answers as an event. Right, and calculates the score. Yeah, by separating these two concepts, it means that we can also have the survey result builder that just gets this aggregated data and maybe serialize it or simply stores it to a database. Mm, I see, yes. And then implementations of the quiz delegate. For example, in our scored game, we just route to result screen. Right, like we have so far. Yes, but also we can have a survey router that presents a thanks for taking part of the survey screen, and that's it. There's no result. Yes. And we can even have like a result API service that uploads a serialized form of that right. result. And we can even compose, right? We can say, as a client, we compose these two responsibilities. Absolutely, yeah. Or we can compose showing the result screen, but also uploading a result to an API or to an analytics API or whatever we want. Then we can compose these different responsibilities. Right. But in order to do that, we would have to separate the two responsibilities, building the result and delegating the aggregated data. Yes. And they are completely separate concerns. They don't even know about each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Building a result doesn't need to know how the data was collected. And so collecting the data has no idea of what the client will do with that. Right. So the flow is not going to have any references to any result types or whatever. It's just going to know about data. Exactly. Pretty much it gives an aggregation of questions and answers right. at the end. And now what you're going to do with this data is up to the clients. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's see how it would look in code. Let's have a look at our current quiz delegate. As you can see, we are passing a result, the concrete type result that knows about score. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem right now. We are limiting our clients. So there's a bunch of things we could do here. For example, we could make the result type be generic, just like we do with question and answer. And now this result type is just a generic type. Right. That can be anything, which means we can inject a result builder into the flow. And at the end, instead of the flow creating the concrete result type, it just asks the builder to build a result from that data. For example, 
if we have a protocol quiz result builder that also have like some associated types and we ask it to build result from yeah for example a dictionary question answer and it returns a result now we can pass this to the flow type instead of the flow creating this result here you can just say result builder dot build result from answers right this is one way of doing this right but does it make sense to still force clients to pass a result builder what if you don't have a result builder what if there's no concept of result exactly should we make this thing optional or should we make the result builder into the flow optional now it's starting to complicate the api yeah exactly the clients will always need the data to either score or present them or do whatever they want with them we don't have to constrain them to this result concrete type so you can build a result from this collection of data that you collected throughout the questionnaire or the quiz right that should be enough right but this creates a new problem now if this is a dictionary and the question is hassable then it's going to exist in the dictionary once what if you want to present the same question twice with different options with different options yes right so using a dictionary here is limiting the api yes so we should probably deprecate this result at some point yes for sure so let's make a note deprecate the result type yes okay so how can we represent this right well if we allow duplication then sets and dictionaries are out of the question which leaves us probably with arrays from the foundation types so an array of answers for example right that might do it but what if we want to delegate the questions to facilitate the needs of the client right because the result is a collection of questions and answers right so we could have a type like a struct question and answer with some generic types and we pass it here collection right. of questions with answers yes and then these presumably are going to be public as well the properties what if we just had tuples there right all we need to do is to combine a question with an answer and a tuple would do that for us right so we could potentially just have a type alias well we can use the named parameters to provide a more detailed context so question and answer yes exactly so we could literally just pass this here then yes exactly exactly and i haven't seen it to be honest in many apis but uh, i think it makes sense in our case here maybe you're gonna regret it <laughs> that's why they say naming is one of the toughest problems in software development right this looks like the simplest way of doing this right now because the problem of having a struct is that clients cannot create this type and this might be yeah. actually good if i don't want clients to be able to create this type so another thing we could do here is then make our initializer public manually right right and look how many decisions we have to make up front by using a struct because the default initializer it has an internal scope right so the clients cannot use it yes in tests you can use a testable import right. and get it right. but it just doesn't sound right to me yeah no for sure and they are both data from the suite point of view plus we can get rid of the hassle there right so we don't need these anymore yes i'm not sure if this is going to work out well but i'm happy to go with the simplest form right now yeah me too but now should we still call these a result it's a good question <laughs> what this is is basically an aggregation of questions and answers so when does this method get called for instance well it gets called when everything has been completed so the quiz has been completed and hey here is the answers to the questions that you have provided that's what this is in my opinion right so this as we call it in our diagram here we said an aggregation of questions and answers yes so we could call it aggregated answers or just as you said answers right but then handle answers i don't think it's meaningful enough that it's going to get called when everything is done 
So perhaps we could change even the name there. So the two events we send to this delegate, one is asking for an answer. Right. And this is telling. Yes, exactly. And based on the Cocoa APIs and overall, <laughs> you know, when you have an ask and a tell in a protocol, basically the asking is the data source. So that probably is a smell there. And I think that's a data source method. And we could probably separate that in the future. Now, as for the handle answers, which it tells the client, this is what you get. Now, that's, that's a delegate method right there. Right. That's why it should probably be separated in different protocols. Right. This is the interface segregation principle in action. Absolutely. Because this is the same as this. So asking for an answer synchronously, asking for an answer asynchronously. Yes. You're asking an answer for a question. Yeah, just like table view ask for a cell for an index path. Yes, exactly. So here what you're saying is like, hey, give me an answer for a question. Mm -hmm. Which means this is the same thing as saying, give me an answer for a question. Right. And then typically we would call the answer callback a completion. So as far as the function that tells you something, that happened in the past. So it's a did something. Yes, I think so, yeah. Like in a table view, we would have a did and displaying cell. Right. This would be did what? Complete. Did complete answers? With answers? Did complete what? Well, the quiz. So did complete quiz with answers. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think that now clarifies this protocol. We don't need the result type anymore. There is no concept of result in here. There is a concept of asking for a question and then telling at the end when the quiz is complete. Right. And we should probably at some point break this down into two protocols. Yes. Data source and a delegate. Exactly. So let me add a note here. Break down protocols into delegate data source. So this is where we want to get. Yes. Okay, that sounds good. We have a plan. Right. So we can start with a function, I think, answer for question. That should be just a renaming. Yeah, exactly. That should be easy. Well, let's do that in the next episode. Cool. Okay. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.